Hi there. So this is the third uh, video uh, talking about performance in a couple of days. Uh, I think I might be onto something um, in terms of improving uh, performance in uh, Sim Update uh, 2. So just a quick uh, recap from uh, the last video. What I did uh, was to disable rolling cache completely. And then I also dis disabled the resizable bar and uh, hardware accelerated uh, graphics scheduling. The problem now is that uh, I don't know which of these uh, three settings are causing the uh, improvement in uh, performance. And the improvement uh, that I'm seeing, which I'm pretty certain that I'm seeing, because I have been testing it uh, a lot using both uh, IFR and uh, VFR flights, uh, the improvements uh, that I'm seeing uh, is mostly better smoothness. The sim runs more smooth, and uh, I'm using some performance uh, overlays, uh, which uh, shows that uh, there is uh, a lot less uh, frame time variance, and the FPS lows are a lot higher in general. And that sort of... Uh, Depends on my uh, traffic settings though, because uh, normally I fly airliner flights. I just did a uh, very nice uh, general aviation flight in uh, northern Norway in the Kaos uh, DA42. And uh, I think that might have been one of the best flights uh, in MSFS uh, so far. Not just uh, 2024, but also 2020. I um, was able to reach um, a uh, T load of 1500. And uh, I had uh, stable FPS, very low frame time variance, and uh, pretty much uh, no stutters, silky smooth. And that is sort of like a low demand scenario, no traffic, uh, just mountains uh, to, to be rendered. So this is a screenshot from uh, that flight with uh, the auto FPS uh, window showing that uh, I was using VFR settings and a T-load top of uh, 1000 and in the latest uh, version of uh, auto fps which is uh, 04410 test one it's possible to edit the auto fps config file so that you can theoretically reach a t-load uh, maximum of 2000 i know it's uh, ridiculous uh, you don't need a t-load of 2000 you don't even need 1500 this is just me trying to push the sim to its limits and uh, we can see here that uh, I was at an altitude of 5,000 feet. I got the FPS locked to 62 with uh, RTSS, which I normally do. And uh, you can see that the frame time graph is completely flat. No stutters at all. And uh, not only that, the average uh, FPS, which is measured in uh, real time with uh, cap frame uh, X, was... Uh, 62 which is uh, my lock and also the one percent low and the 0.2 percent low were exactly at 62 so that is a very very good result especially at a high t-load like that i uh, also did, did a flight uh, from uh, inibils uh, heathrow over to uh, flight tempas uh, amsterdam skippel in the phoenix uh, a319 and uh, this is uh, on the approach to runway 06. I was uh, overflying the airport using uh, FSHUD and uh, letting FSHUD inject traffic. So I was overflying the airport at 7,000 feet and uh, the T-load that uh, auto FPS calculated for me was uh, 285, which I think is uh, reasonable at this altitude in an airliner with lots of traffic. I think I had uh, something like um, 30 active and 80 parked or something, which is uh, really, really high. Basically, max traffic, traffic settings with uh, FSHUD. And uh, here we can also see that uh, the uh, frame time variance is pretty much uh, zero. The frame time graph is flat, no stutters, and then very, very good uh, low, uh, low values as well the 1% and the 0.2% uh, low. I did have some uh, trouble uh, coming in on short fun. Everything was uh, nice and smooth until about two miles from touchdown. 
and then things uh, started to plummet uh, and then uh, auto fps uh, kicked in with the reduction settings to try and uh, restore some uh, performance but i still had stutters but uh, that's not the main point and the reason i had stutters uh, on short fun was uh, because of my crazy high uh, fsr uh, traffic settings uh, i'm uh, fairly confident that with uh, more modest uh, traffic settings uh, things would have been fine didn't mean to turn uh, on and off caps lock so three settings that i uh, changed and then i also updated some files so let's go through the three settings the first one is to uh, disable the rolling cache file completely okay so to delete the rolling cache file that is uh, very easy you just uh, create a folder anywhere on your computer you can call it uh, whatever you like and then you go to uh, settings and then online and then you scroll down to rolling cache and then you point to that folder you can see that uh, I have pointed to a folder on my uh, F drive. So after pointing to this uh, folder that you just uh, created, you just uh, save and then you quit the sim. And then you delete the folder. And then when you start the sim again, you can see that the rolling cache uh, size is zero. And the second change is to disable resizable bar. I've done that in the uh, BIOS, which I recommend to make sure that it is uh, completely disabled. It can be a little bit tricky if you are not uh, familiar with your BIOS uh, settings and, uh, and the BIOS layout uh, highly depends on your motherboard. There is another way to do it, and uh, that is to uh, download uh, something called uh, NVIDIA Profile Inspector. I'll leave a link in the, in the description to where to download it. Um, what NVIDIA Profile Inspector does is basically uh, it enables you to change all the settings that you can change in NVIDIA Control Panel. This one here. And in addition to that, uh, you can change a lot of other custom settings which aren't available in NVIDIA Control Panel. So if you're in the base profile and then you scroll down to section five common, then you can go to resizable bar here and then choose disable and then apply changes. And uh, that will uh, disable resizable bar globally on your PC. But uh, like I mentioned, I did it in the BIOS. The third change is to uh, Disable uh, hardware accelerated uh, graphics scheduling. So you go to the display settings and then I think it was graphics and then advanced uh, graphic settings and then you just uh, turn it off uh, here. I suspect that uh, I'm getting the most benefit from uh, disabling resizable bar and uh, uh, the rolling cache file. Um, it sort of makes sense to disable resizable bar, although it can uh, improve the performance in some uh, games. Uh, probably won't do that in uh, MSFS 2024. And the reason for that is that uh, when you enable um, resizable bar, it allows your game or application to access the whole GPU memory at once, um, the whole VRAM, instead of in... Uh, 256 uh, megabyte chunks when it is uh, disabled. So some games can have uh, some somewhat improved performance and other titles like, uh, for instance, MSFS might get worse performance with the resizable bar on. So I do have an uh, NVIDIA 4090 GPU and since I disabled uh, HEX, that means that I can't use uh, DLSS uh, frame generation. That's all right, because uh, it is possible to use uh, frame generation from AMD FSR 3. And I think it works uh, pretty much uh, just as well as uh, NVIDIA. Uh, you do have uh, twice the uh, frame rate, and I don't see many artifacts. I think, in fact, I see less artifacts than with uh, the NVIDIA frame generation. So 
since I'm using AMD FSR3 now, I realized that uh, perhaps I could update the uh, AMD files in the MSFS uh, folder. Sort of similar to updating the uh, NVIDIA DLSS DLL files, which I've talked about in uh, previous uh, videos. So I did uh, do a search on Google and I uh, found uh, this uh, website here. AMD GPU open, and then I downloaded the, this uh, package here. And uh, I'll just show you my um, MSFS 2024 folder. Uh, I have a custom installation, so it's on my F drive. And uh, it is under MSFS 2024 and then Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. And uh, your uh, MSFS 2024 folder might be in a different location. And then uh, if you go to content here, then we search content, dot DLL, that list all the DLL files. And then if we go to the uh, folder that I uh, downloaded, the Fidelity FX SDK folder, we can do the same. Actually, we'll, we'll go to bin because uh, that is where all the DLL files uh, are. And then we'll uh, search. And then if we compare, compare to the DLL files in the MSFS uh, folder, we can see that uh, there are three files that uh, we can update. Uh, that is uh, this one here. And uh, it is this one here, and it's sorry, and it's this one here. Those three files. So uh, what you do is uh, simply to copy these three files like this, and then you just paste and then replace. Probably uh, not a good idea to do that when the sim is running, because then they'll be in use. So I've already done that. All right, so final part of this uh, video, which is a relatively short one, is just to test the performance using the Phoenix uh, A319 at uh, Inabuilt's uh, JFK with uh, mostly ultra or maximum settings and uh, photogrammetry on. And I'm also going to load some traffic uh, using uh, FS HUD. So let's see here, FS HUD is running here. If I close this window, then uh, it is still down in the system tray. I also find that uh, since I have uh, disabled the rolling cache file, then the sim loads uh, a lot quicker. Yeah, and also we have uh, auto FPS uh, running in the background here. We are going to go into drone cam and then uh, put up the performance uh, overlay, which is uh, a combination of information from uh, Weaver Tuner Statistics Server, um, MSI Afterburner. Yeah, so Weaver Tuner Statistics Server and then MSI Afterburner and then also CapFrame X. Freeware apps. I did uh, make a video a while ago about uh, how to use these three apps to get uh, this performance uh, overlay. So if we open the FSUD uh, window here, you can see that I've limited the aircraft to maximum 50 parked and maximum 25 uh, active. That is actually quite a lot at the uh, huge airport like uh, JFK. And uh, if you have a look at the frame time graph, and keep in mind that I've locked FPS to 62 using uh, River Tuner, you can see that the frame time graph is uh, completely flat. And unless I pan around, the 1% low and the 0.2% low should be also very good. We can see that uh, now all three values are approaching uh, 62. 
So let's just uh, keep the auto FPS uh, window open. You can see that uh, we do have a T load of 50 here on the ground. So let's just pan around a little bit and uh, keep an eye on the uh, frame time graph here. Of course, a T load of 50 is uh, it's not it's not great. We can probably see that the uh, ground textures uh, are a little bit uh, blurry. But that's because I'm using FS HUD and uh, quite a bit of uh, injected uh, traffic. So, you do have to make some compromises. Actually, that was very smooth, the way that the uh, airliner moved. I find that we, if I'm using uh, Beyond ATC to inject traffic, then uh, I'm getting some stutters. But uh, the main point here is that uh, I think the sim runs uh, incredibly smooth. Did have a few spikes on the frame time graph there, but not much. So I don't think I've been able to do this to run uh, this uh, amount of traffic at uh, Inbuilt's uh, JFK and to have the sim run this smooth. We can see that uh, there are virtually no stutters at all at the moment. If you pan around fast enough, you will get stutters because there's so much. To scenery to load and stuff. But I'm uh, quite impressed by this. Um, if, if I have time and if I can be bothered, I should probably try and determine which of the three settings that uh, are beneficial to performance, or it could be a combination of all three disabling rolling cache, hags, and uh, resizable bar. Uh, I did uh, also notice uh, an improvement after updating the uh, AMD files, so that might uh, also be worth a try. Yeah, I think this is very impressive actually. Very, very smooth. Alright, so that's it for this video, a short one. Thank you for watching and uh, until next time. Take care.